Hey guys, welcome back. It's Matt here in the Meat Church Live Fire Kitchen in Waxahachie, Texas. So today, I thought I'd show you guys brisket burn-ins. When I teach brisket, I normally go through and show how to cook a full packer as well as making burn-ins. And I'll be honest, burn-ins may be the best bite in barbecue for me. Uh, they resonate with students more than just about anything I teach. Uh, people always want to go out and try it. And, and once you do try it, you probably will do this additional trim step to do it the next time you cook a brisket. It has been my experience. Um, so anyway, a little bit about burn-ins. They come from Kansas City, you know, originated years ago. And, um, you know, I say Texas barbecue is king, but I'm not mad about a Kansas City burn-in. So what I thought I'd do today is just show you guys how to take a whole pack of brisket. Uh, this is actually trimmed and ready to cook, but I like to go one step further in my trim to actually get maximum burn-ins. So brisket is comprised of a flat and the point. The burn ends come from the point. And as you can see on this brisket, you can only see a little bit of it. So I want to peel some of this flat back to expose more of the point so that I can apply seasoning to it to build bark and make more burn ends. I use an analogy, I kind of liken a brisket to an Oreo cookie with two offset wafers. So the point being the bottom chocolate wafer, this fat in the middle being the cream, and the flat on top being the other wafer, and they're kind of offset. What I'm going to do is try to remove some of this cream, peel back that layer so that we can see the point meat a little bit better. And it's really easy. You just follow, you see the fat line here in between the two muscles, and you can really see it on the other side. You can see the fat line continues on, in between the flat and the point. So with my knife, I'm just going to make an incision in this fat. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, just kind of follow this fat line just a little bit so that I can basically grab this and just start to kind of fillet it back and there's a few ways to do this you know I find it's a little bit of trial and error it really only takes you about one time of doing this to get it right so now that I've got this flat this is all flat meat in my hand and you see the fat underneath it I'm just filleting it back is all I'm doing and there's varying ways to do this some people like to completely separate this flat and point um, I like the way it cooks keeping it together so I'm not gonna go that far you do get to choose how far back you come on this. You see these muscles come this far back. I could, I could trim all the way back to here. I'm not gonna go quite that far. I just want to, um, you know, just expose a little bit of this point meat or quite a bit of the point meat. There we go. So you really start to see them come apart. So you see all that fat in there and you can start to see the point meat underneath. So all I have left to do is I need to shave this fat out of here. So I want to, again, expose the point meat. So just taking my knife flat along the point, I'm carving out this fat so I can start to expose it. And like I said, that's so that we can apply seasoning and start to build bark on this. If we hadn't taken this step, it obviously would have been covered by fat in this flat. So I want uh, this to be seasoned and exposed in the smoker. That's just all fat right there. Just one little last shave here. And this is just all fat I'm pulling off. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get it all. You can leave a little bit. I just want to get those big hard pieces out. One more little piece here and I'm going to call it good. Okay. So now you can see that I've totally exposed that point meat. And I've got about another inch here. That was about the end of the road there. So that's a pretty good job exposing most of it. So now I can hit that with seasoning. And when I go to cook this brisket, whether I'm meat up or fat up, this point will be out here on its own. Nice, beautiful bark on it. And in the cook process, I can actually cut it off when it's done and make my burn ends out of it. All right, so we've got this trimmed. Now we need to season it and put it on. Um, I'm going to choose to cook this one meat up. You don't have to, but that's just for demonstration purposes so I can really illustrate the two different muscles. 
Um, so given that, I'm going to season on the fat side first. And I'm not going to go through, you know, how to cook the brisket in this video. We've already got a video on our channel for that and, and recipes on meatchurch.com. But I am applying my beef seasoning, our holy cow, which is a great choice for a Texas brisket, or you can use whatever seasoning you like. And then one thing that's been very successful for us is coming back across that with my holy gospel. This did us right this year at the Houston Rodeo where we finaled and brisket, so no reason to change that. And I'm not going to sit here and let this adhere just for this video. I'm going to just pat it on, flip over, and show you the other side. Plus, you can see not that much is going to fall off of it. Flip it over, and I'm going to repeat that exact process. So if I had to guess, this is probably two to one, holy cow, uh, to holy gospel. Lift that up. You want to be sure to season all sides. Get messy with it. And then come back across that again with our holy gospel. I like to season up high, get a nice even application. Season all the sides. Okay, so I'm going to at least let that adhere and sweat out for you know, 15 minutes. I'd love to give it 30 if you've got that much time. And we're going to go put this on our pit. Um, we're going to cook our brisket today at 275. Uh, you can cook at whatever temperature you like, but the recipes we have on meatchurch.com run at 275. So that's what we're going to put this on at. And we're basically going to cook this brisket until it's done. And what's going to happen when the brisket's done, I'm going to lift this flat up, and I'm going to actually cut the point off. And we're going to make our burn ends out of this. Like I said earlier, you could choose to separate and cook them separately if you want to. I like the way they cook connected together, so it's just my preference, but either way works. Today, we're only focused on the point meat and making the burn ends out of here. To me, that's the best part of the brisket. You can give this to your neighbors, and you can keep this for yourself. So, let's get this on the pit. All right, so we have our pit rolling at 275 degrees for this cook. And again, I'm not focused on how to cook the brisket. I'm only focused on the point meat to bake burn ends. So however you cook your brisket, you know, this is probably going to be about a 10, 11 hour cook based on the size of this brisket. Um, you know, it's probably around 11, 12 pounds cooking at 275. What I'm looking for is for the point meat to be at least 195 degrees internal temperature, if not 200, preferably not too much further. Um, and so I'll cook this until the brisket's done. And when the brisket's done, I'll lift this, this flat up and I'll just take a knife and I'll cut that point off. And I'll, I'll take that out and that's actually where we'll make our burn ends. So we're gonna let that brisket go, come back and check on it, make some burn ends. All right guys, so over here on the stick burner, uh, we've got a brisket that we had trimmed the exact same way as we just showed you. And we chose to cook this one meat up. You don't have to do that. I did it for illustration purposes so that you could see the flat here and you could see the point here. So this brisket's done. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take it over to the cutting board. We're going to lift this flat up and we're going to remove the point and make that into burn ends. You could have even separated the muscles before the cook. I like to cook it together, but it's just whatever you guys want to do. All right, so we've got this cooked brisket. Like I said, you got the flat, you got the point. We wanna go ahead and lift the flat up, get underneath there and cut this point away. I'm gonna set the flat aside, wrap that up, put it in your cooler, let it rest for another hour or so. Because again, for the burn ends, we're just gonna work solely with the point meat. So this one wasn't real huge, uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna cut it into one by one cubes. So I just make one inch strips or so. That's got epic bark on that end. And so you see the benefit of removing that fat again between the flat and the point so that we could apply seasoning to the point and build this bark on top of it. So now we've got bark on a couple sides and we're gonna again cut these into about one by one cubes or so.
If it's too hot, you can let it rest just a little bit so that you can handle it. Okay. Man, look at that bark. So I've got a pan here of, uh, you know, from another brisket where I made some more, so we'd have quite a few. Just gonna pile them all together in just, uh, this is a half size steam pan is what I find works best for me. So again, a Kansas City burn in has got a little bit of sweet and a little bit of kick. So I wanna apply some more seasoning to it. I'm gonna use our Holy Gospel. You can use your favorite rub. Uh, this one works really well on beef and it has a little bit of sweetness to it. So I think it works great for burn ins. I'm gonna apply it here and just kinda of toss the cubes around. My goal here is to just kinda of toss all sides, or coat all the sides a little bit. Get seasoning on all the sides here. Nice application. Whoop, run away. My dog will be happy about that one. All right, that's pretty good. Now it's time to sauce. So I use meat Mitch sauce. My thought is if you wanna make a real Kansas City burn in, then let's use a Kansas City sauce. Meat Mitch uh, makes a really good one. Uh, you can use your favorite sauce. So the goal here is to just coat all the sides, okay? It's not to leave you know, a half inch or inch of sauce in your pan. You just wanna put enough sauce in here so when you toss these, that you're just gonna get a little bit on all those sides. So all these sides don't have anything on them. You want seasoning and you want sauce. Toss them around nicely. And from here, it's real easy. We're gonna go back on the pit for about an hour. What we're trying to do is we want the fat and the point meat here to continue to render and we wanna caramelize this sauce on the outside. So you can see there, not too much sauce, not a bunch of excess, just enough to coat the cubes. We're gonna throw them back in the pit and in an hour we'll be eating good. Okay, we're gonna put these uh, burn-ins on the offset. Um, I'm cooking it about 275 degrees, no magic to it. You can be 225, 250, 275, any cooker you like. Got these on the stick burner. They'll take 45 minutes to an hour. Um, you could check them about halfway through the cook, maybe give them a toss if you like, but otherwise you don't have to do a lot. Make sure they're uncovered. If you cover this with foil, that sauce will kind of run off of it and you'll steam them. So this is uncovered, 275 for me, about an hour. See y'all soon. Okay guys, so we've been cooking for almost an hour. I looked at these one time during the cook. You don't worry about internal temperature or anything like that. We're just looking for the sauce to caramelize around those burn ends, which it has here. So you can still see they're a little bit wet, super juicy. These things are gonna be epic. I can't wait much longer. So we're gonna head over to the board and eat. All right guys, so I've let these rest just long enough to cool off. They don't have to have any hour long rest like a like a brisket or anything like that. But these babies look awesome. I'm telling you this might be one of the best bites in barbecue. Pretty hard to argue. So man, they look good. So not too hard to make, a little additional trim required, but I think worth it, so you should try these. Let us know what you think, and I think you might just be hooked to where you trim every brisket like that. I'm gonna give these a shot. Mm. They just melt in your mouth. That fat continued to render. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of kick from the meat mince womp sauce, holy gospel seasoning. I love it. So if you guys like this, Subscribe to our channel. We've actually got a twist on these coming up pretty soon here where we're gonna do a little something extra with them. So stay tuned.